Welcome back, everyone. It is May 15th. Thought I'd come out and give you another little tour of the garden. It's been, I don't know, a couple weeks since our last tour. And figured I'd just show you what's going on, what's going out, what's coming in, all that good stuff. So you notice here at the first, we've got our Trombuchino zucchini, which is growing quite well at the trellis. Well, it has to have a little help. It wants to grow down, but I've picked it up and put it on the trellis and it's going up pretty good. There is a little female fruit right there. It'll be popping open. Popping open. There's another female right there. Another female right there. So we're gonna have some of these guys opened up and ready to be pollinated here pretty soon. And then that, I'm gonna zoom in. I'm pretty sure that that is a ladybug, uh, I don't know if it's a larva or like the intermediate stage. Pretty sure that's what that is. So, very good, very glad to see that here in the garden. Of course, we had a little uh, ladybug love making going on a couple weeks ago. So, hopefully I've got lots of these guys crawling around. I'll just continue on in this bed here and see how it's kind of not grown up the trellis. So I'm going to have to train it up the trellis. Gravity and all. It wants to go down. All right. I'll get it up there. Hopefully that'll hang, hang tight there. And then I got some peppers right here. These are, I think these are yellow bell peppers, if I remember correctly. And then we got, see, we got some little fruits there coming on. Really pleased with how these guys are doing. A few more flowers. And then back behind that, along that fence there, is Chinese runner, Chinese noodle beans. And they kind of got a slow start, but that's what I read about them, is that they kind of have a slow start, and then they take off and they grow all through the summer, so... Not super worried about them being slow. Apparently, they really like the heat. So, when it heats up here in East Texas, I think that's when they'll really start to flourish. Also, have another Trombuchino zucchini back there. And it looks like it may just go ahead and climb up that trellis, which would be fine. That'll give me plenty of room on this one for it to go up. These are our Texas cream peas. If you haven't watched a video before, these the seed from these peas came from stock that we got from Charlie's uncle, my husband's uncle, which came from his grandpa, which came from, I think, their Aunt Millie. And this is a Texas 21 cream pea. It's not something that you can get anymore down at the feed store or whatever. So this is something we'll have to save this seed in order to continue using it. And it's, so it's pretty cool to have a little piece of my husband's grandfather growing right here in our garden. Uh, right here, I got a poblano pepper that has fallen over, and I've got to get that staked up. I probably told y'all that the last time we had one of these videos, but I do have some over there. That's kind of on my to-do list for today is to get those staked up. We got our tomatoes back here growing like crazy. They have buds all over them, so we're going to have, uh, we have tomatoes at the yin-yang, which is a great problem to have because we love tomatoes. So, they're doing really well. We got lots of rain last weekend. I don't know if you can see. Let's zoom in. Right there. See those little cherry tomatoes there? So, it's going to be here in a few weeks. We're going to have more tomatoes than we want. No. Whoa. Then we know what to do with. And uh, somehow we'll figure out how to survive. So, right here I've got a patty pan squash. Let me see if I can get in here and show you some of the... See the... See if I can show you the stuff. So right there, that's a patty pan. It looks like, to me, it looks like a little UFO. And then there's another one right there. So I've got tons of squash there. And I'm just waiting for the squash vine borers to come in and destroy them. It looks like, I don't know if that's squash vine borer damage or what. But it looks kind of grainy there. I'll have to check that out. I don't know. We'll see. But the plant doesn't look like it's dying. So usually when a squash vine borer gets it, it dies pretty quick. That's the nice thing about this Trombuchino zucchini is that it's supposed to be squash vine borer resistant. So we're going to cross our fingers on that. 
let's see. Oh, oh, here we go. We've got our, I think this is a red bell. These are red bell pepper plants. And you can see we actually have a bell pepper right there. And then over here, we got another one. And since the red bell pepper, I'm waiting for them to turn red. Then we got another patty pan squash here. You'll notice at the bottom of these are nasturtiums. And nasturtiums are supposed to help keep squash vine borers away. So I'm hoping that that is what it will do. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, growing up this trellis, we have a birdhouse gourd. And it is going on up there. Look at that. Very, very nice. Pleased with that. Uh, and on this side, I planted some spaghetti squash but none of it came up. I think my seed, it was seed that I saved from last year. So I'm thinking maybe my seed was not good. My, my plants got bit by squash vine borers and I think maybe they got this, the, it was just too soon for the, for the fruit to have actually uh, made good seeds. So I got some eggplant there and then these pepper plants look pitiful. It looks like something's chewed on them. I don't know. I don't know if maybe they just don't get enough sun here. Probably what I should have done is spaced. Since these eggplants are big, I should have put a space between the eggplants and the pepper plants so that they get more sun. Um, I don't know why these look so sad. But I know this bed gets more shade. We've got that big oak tree right there. So this bed gets more shade than all the other beds. We got pretty good sun right now, but as the day goes on and the sun moves further over west in the sky, we're going to get shade coming in from this. So really, these beds only get a couple good hours, uh, maybe two, three hours of good sunlight. Um, that tomato looks really good. Got lots of blossoms on it. Uh, here, I've got some green beans that I planted. These I planted about two weeks after I planted these green beans which are actually already have some green beans on them right there so i'm going to be able to harvest green beans starting here in just a few days i like my green beans to be a little bigger before i harvest them got some more of that millennials uh eggplant there and then this is jambalaya okra i got this seed from haas tools it's supposed to be a very prolific type of jambalaya so i'm hoping i get lots of jambalaya for from it and then i think i've got Oh yeah, back here. These are, again, I need to get these guys staked. That right there is a loot shower pepper. These are the peppers that you can use to make paprika. So I'm hoping I get enough. I only have, I think five plants. One, two, three, four, and then a little dinky one there. Five of these loot shower peppers. I'm hoping I get enough peppers off of them that I can harvest the fruit and then dehydrate it and turn it into paprika. I don't know if we will, but that's all the plants that made it out of the ones that I started. So again, our green beans here looking pretty good. I'll be getting some green beans this week. See, they're really, some of those are ready, but I just like them to be a little bit bigger. And then down here, in hindsight, I should have done this a little differently. I, I should have given more space for my green beans, but I've got to, I think this is zucchini growing right here. And then there's some nasturtiums growing among that. And then this, growing up this trellis, is a bushel basket gourd. I'm going to regret having that zucchini there. I've got a space right there. I wonder if I could move it. Because I do have room for it there. So I may end up doing that. I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it. Because these green beans will be done here in a couple of weeks. And then I'll have room for the zucchini. So anyway, this is a uh, bushel basket gourd. Never grown these before. The seed that I had was really old. And I thought, what the heck, I'll plant it, see how it does. And one of them came up out of the four that I planted. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Over here, I've got, growing on this trellis, growing the other direction on this trellis, is a snake bean. And I think I've got one, two, three of those that came up. It is being overshadowed by this summer squash that I planted back here. So hopefully I can get it out here on this trellis, get it growing up, get it some sunlight so that it doesn't get too overshadowed. Oh, that, maybe that's just, yeah. So get in a little sunlight that way. Maybe it'll grow up and then it can get up and get some sunlight. This is a summer squash here, uh, just a yellow crook neck. And it is doing really well. Look at all those fruits it's got on there. I came out and hand pollinated a couple of these the other day. 
but there's another female right there. You can tell the difference between a male and a female fruit on these squash plants because the females will actually have a little, um, uh, a little what looks like the squash right there. And I did a video last year, which I posted not too long ago on how to hand pollinate these things. If you don't have a lot of pollinators, which is something that I've struggled with in the past, is not having enough pollinators in the garden. If you don't have enough, then we're going to have to hand pollinate them so if you want to have a good crop. So what I'm hoping and praying is that I can get some good crops of squash before the squash vine borers make it in. But again, I did try and plant some nasturtiums and other things that'll keep the squash vine borers away. Cross your fingers, hope that works. Uh, got a couple more pepper plants here. And again, these two in the front look pitiful, but that one in the back looks really good. And I don't know if it's just because these guys aren't getting enough sun because they're kind of overshaded by it. But I mean, there's not that much shade there on that back one. I don't know. This is, this is all learning experience. I mean, I've only been, I mean, I've been gardening for several years, but this is the first time using these beds. So it's going to take me a little bit to figure out what the system ought to be. And in hindsight, I should not have planted these, uh, these squash, that squash there. That was, I should have given more space for sure. Because back behind this yellow squash plant, I have two eggplants, which are good sized plants. And I also have okra growing right there that's burgundy okra if you see that yellow that burgundy uh red colored stem that's burgundy okra my thought was on the burgundy okra is it would get tall and it would be able to be up and um be able to get sun uh even though i know squash plants get big but in uh you know looking back now i probably should have laid this out a little different i'll know for next year i won't have things quite so crowded in here i'll, I'll do a better job of spacing things for sure for sure. And the reason I did this is because I thought, well, I'm going to grow this up a trellis, which I haven't, not a trellis, but grow this up a stake. But even if I put this thing up a stake, oh, look, there's a bee. Yay. So that is very encouraging. Um, so what I thought is I'll put this up a stake and that'll give me more room to grow things. But even growing it up a stake, it's going to be a big plant. So I should have, in hindsight, I certainly should have done something different with my squash plants uh, again tomatoes in the back there looking really good and then i've got some more cream peas here these are pepper plants right here uh, and then i've got cream peas here in front cream peas i skipped a row there on purpose thinking well i'll put something there and i haven't quite done that yet and i may not and then i've got some more pepper plants here i think these are yeah these are not a pinos because i can see a little jalapeno coming on right there oh here is it there you go right there Got a little jalapeno there. And these are called not a pinos because they're supposed to have the flavor of the jalapeno, but not the heat. So cross our fingers on that. Uh, let me run out here right quick. Can't really see. Okay, this is Lufa. I grew this last year and it was kind of fun to grow. So I thought oh, I'll grow some again this year. All right, this on the back fence here is a Parisian pickling cucumber. And I had some little female fruits. Here we go. See it right there? that little tiny baby cucumber these are uh pickling cucumbers they don't get very big they get maybe just a few inches long oh look there's some love bugs i had really hoped that our freezing cold weather would have killed them but sadly no anyway so these things don't get very big and i have let me see one two three four five six seven i think i've got no, six. I've got six times two. I put two in each square. So i got 12 of these plants. So I'm not going to get a huge crop. So we won't have enough to go through the hassle of canning things. But what I'm going to do is take these as they get done, as they get ready to pick, and make cucumber uh, um, refrigerator pickles out of them. Because you can just mix up your vinegar and stuff and then just drop the cucumber in there and let it sit in the refrigerator for a few days and then you've got a pickle without having to go through all the hassle of actually pickling and canning and all that so that is my plan for these because i never i mean i don't really like pickle or cucumbers i like dill pickles but i don't really like cucumbers so to just grow cucumbers to put on a salad no i'm not going to do that so but uh making refrigerator pickles out of them oh yeah i can do that so moving back to our fourth and final bed these are this is all my cold weather stuff in this bed here and as you can tell it is bolting and kind of on its way out so next week 
probably not today because we have company today. Uh, next week, my plan is to get my peas are done back there in the back, get those pulled out. The broccoli all went to seed before I could harvest any. The uh, spinach is going to seed and see, get over here so y'all can see this broccoli. See, I got tons of broccoli seed here. And so now I just have to uh, harvest that. And I don't know if I should leave it in the garden and harvest it or take it out and let it dry somewhere and go ahead and clean this out so that I can plant other stuff, I guess. I can't really think of anything I want to plant. I've got pretty much everything I want to plant planted. I certainly don't need any more tomatoes, do I? Uh, this is kohlrabi. And I haven't harvested any of it yet, but I think this one is probably ready to harvest. See that kind of bulb there? Uh, they are supposed to be like cabbage. So I'm going to harvest that sometime next week and cook it. And then, like I said, my sweet sugar snap peas are done. They're just, now I'm just kind of waiting for those things to dry. So, and all of this, what I'll do is I'll take it over, put it in the chicken compost, and then they can scratch it around and eat what they want. And the rest of it, they'll just scratch and make compost for me. Uh, lettuce will be coming out. I'm going to harvest some lettuce today because we have a homeschool event this afternoon. And so I'm going to harvest some of my lettuce and have some fresh lettuce for our friends. It looks like our onions are done because they're falling over. I've read that this is my first time to grow onions. So I've heard when they fall over and start turning brown, it's time to harvest them. And they all appear to have fallen over and they're starting to turn brown. So, again, that is what I will do maybe tomorrow. Our guests are supposed to leave tomorrow morning, so I'll probably be out here doing this tomorrow. So, that is the garden tour for May the 15th. Um, haven't quite figured out what I'll do with this bed once I get all the cold weather stuff out of it. I could plant... I don't know. I don't know what I can plant. I got tons of seeds. I got seeds up the yin-yang, so... What I might do now, it's really too late to start. Well, I don't know. We have such a long growing season. I guess I could start some more peppers and put peppers over here in this this bed. I don't know. We will see. I'll, uh, I guess uh, the next time you guys come out and we do a garden tour, I'll update you on what I ended up deciding to do. Oh, one last thing. I'm going to show you our sugar cane. My son wanted to grow sugar cane. So this is his little bed of sugar cane. And he comes out and waters it for the most part. I don't have to deal with it. We planted four. But that, as you can tell, that little square right there is still empty. So I guess three out of four is not too bad. I don't know what the germination rate is on sugar cane. But so far, we're clocking in at 75%. So that is the update for May the 15th. We'll be back here probably in the next couple of weeks, maybe another week. And man, it's not going to be long before I'm able to start getting bringing squash in, which makes me exceedingly exceedingly happy so can't complain about that till then you guys have a good week thanks for watching and if you like this make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel i would like to get enough subscribers so that my content automatically uploads over at odyssey so if you would give me the do me the great favor of liking and subscribing to the channel i would sincerely appreciate it thanks guys